If you see the word product, you know what it means. It means multiply. If you didn't know, now you know. Make sure you memorize it. It's a very important word, product. Product, multiply. We have to multiply these numbers. That's the theme of this lesson. Except the numbers we're going to be multiplying all involve decimal values. So here's how you do this. It says find the product of these two. You take the numbers, you stack them. Scene one, Apple take two. We have 2.4 multiplied by 3.6. How do we do a question like this? Here's what I recommend you do. You take these little markers over here and you use it to cover up the numbers that you don't need. We're going to start with the 6. You always start with the number on the bottom that's on the far right. So we don't need any of this stuff. We don't need this 3 over here. We're just going to multiply 6 by 4 and 6 by 2. 6 times 4 is 24. So we carry the 2 for 24 and we put the 4 down here. Now we gotta go, we have to go across. We have to go 6 times 2 plus 2 more. Okay, not 6 times 2 times 2. It's 6 times 2 plus 2 more. 6 times 2 is 12. 2 more is 14. So we write 14. I know some of you might be thinking, why don't we carry the 1? The reason is we don't have any more numbers on this top side over here to carry over. If we had another digit over here, like let's say we had a, a, a 1 over here or something like 100 or 12.4 times 6, then 6 times 2 plus 2 would have been 14. You would have carried the 1 and wrote just the 4 down and then went about in time 6 times 1 plus 1 and then wrote the next number 7 down here. But we don't have this situation. So we're going to go back and we're just going to write the 14 down there. Now once we're done with this 6 here, we're we're done with it. We don't need it anymore. We need to use the next number on the bottom, which is the 3. So I'm going to cover this up over here. We don't need this anymore. We're going to take the 3 and multiply by these two. Now, we don't need this. We'll, we'll throw this guy. We'll flick him over here. We're going to take the 3, multiply by 4, go across, start over here, and then move this way, right to left. 3 times 4. Oh, before we start, we need to put a 0 down. And I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to put 0 here. Now we can start. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1, put the 2 down. Now we go 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. That's it. We've used up both numbers on the bottom. We can put this over here. We're, we're done with both of these numbers. Now we can just add these two rows and get the answer. 4, 6, and 8. Now the real question is, where does the decimal go? Because we do have a decimal here. In fact, we have two decimals. What you do is you count all the digits that come after the decimal. We have one digit here. In fact, I'll circle them. I have one digit here, and we have the second digit there. We have two digits. So you start on the end, and you count two backwards. You put the array there. Now, if you look at this, look, you have two digits now after the decimal, and you have two digits all together after the decimal. If they match, you put the decimal in the right spot. We can also use some logic here and say 2.4 is about 2. 3.6 is about 4. It's very close to 4. And 4 times 2 is about 8. If you would have put the decimal here, you would have gotten 86.4. That makes no sense because 4 times 2 is not 86. The only logical place to put the decimal would be right here because that gets us 8.64, which is about 8. Find the product, again, we see the word product, of these two numbers. So, <laughs> we go like, I think he's laughing because we didn't line these things up properly. We have to do this, right? Remember lining up the decimals when we did addition? We have to do this, right? Nope, not in multiplication. If you, sometimes they'll line up. Like the last question, they just happen to line up. But in this one here, you don't, no, the, the important thing is lining up the numbers in multiplication. I don't have time to really go into the technicalities of why that is, but just remember, line up the numbers. So don't do this because now the numbers aren't lined up. Push this guy over, boom, push him over so that the edges of each number are lined up. We need to have the edges like that lined up. See, this is, imagine that's a wall. Now it's okay. But what about the decimals? They're all messed up and the place values are all messed up. It doesn't matter. You're going to see here in a moment how that makes no difference at all. Now look what we have. We have to cover up the numbers we're not interested in. We don't care about these two now. We just care about the six. And I'm going to move that line out of the way. Six times six, 36. 36. Six times two, 12. And three more is 15. 
carry the one. Six times one plus one is seven. Do I put a decimal? No, not yet. We're done with the six. I'm going to scribble them out. We're going to move this block over. Now, I'm going to cover all this up. In fact, I'll move that squiggle too. We care now about the five. We, we are, we're done the six. Now we're going to move to the five. And I don't need these ones anymore. If you had a pencil and paper, you just erase that and, and then you're good. Now we're going to go, before we start though, remember, what do we put? Zero. Now we can begin. Five times six is 30. Carry the three over the next number. Put the zero down. Five times two plus three is 13. Right away, carry the one. Put the three down. Five times one plus one is six. Any decimals yet? No. Nope. Worry about the decimals at the end. Now we've used up two numbers. We're down to our third one at the bottom. We get rid of these and we start again. But before you do, you got to put not one zero, but two zeros. Every row you begin, you add an extra zero and then you start. Two times six is 12. Carry the one, put the two. Two times two plus one is five. Two times one is two. We've used up all of the digits. Now we just add these numbers on the bottom. You're going to get six here. You're going to get five. You're going to get 10, 11, 12. We can carry the one. Six and seven and five is going to be 12 and three. Now the decimal spot, that's the trickiest part of the question, I think. You have, let's see, let's circle these. Change into red. We have two numbers after the decimal and one more makes three numbers after the decimal, which means our answer has to have three numbers after the decimal. Put it right there. We've got three numbers after the decimal. It works out. By the way, 25.6 is about 25 times 1 point, 25 times 1 is about 25. 32 is pretty close to that. So we know our answer is reasonable. And the last question, we have Sandy bought five car chargers for her friends to use when they charged their phones. Each car charger cost her $15.92. She got ripped off. She walked out of the store with $8.25. How much money did Sandy start with? A little bit more advanced question. Here's what I recommend you do. Take that. Since each charger is 1592 and there's five chargers, that's 1592 times five. Multiplication, repeated addition, same thing. We're going to take this, we're going to get an answer. Five times two is 10. Carry the one. Five times nine is 45 plus one is 46. Five and five is 25 plus four is 29. Five times one plus two is going to be seven. Two numbers after the decimal, which means I need two numbers after the decimal here. So I'll put that there. There, we got two numbers and two numbers. This one doesn't have a decimal. It's right there, but it's invisible. So we don't care about it. So $79.60 is what she paid altogether. But when she walked out of the store, she had $8.25 in her pocket. So what does that mean? Here she is. She walks out of the store. And she's gone out and now she spent all her money there. And now she has 825 in her pocket. How much money did she start with? Think about it. She has 825 in her pocket on her way out, which means that she had 825 plus $79.60 more, which she spent in the store. So how much did she have altogether? She had this number. Plus all that number right here. We have these two totaled to get us this. We have to add them together. But we have to line the decimals up because now we're adding again. Remember in multiplying, you don't line the decimals up. We don't put the five here and say, oh, there's a decimal there. So we line them up. No, you just line them up on the edges. With addition, now we got to think, okay, now we have to line the decimals up. And now we can add the numbers. So we're going to get five plus zero, six plus two, put the decimal. 9 and 8 is 17. Carry the 1 and then you get 8 over here. So she had $87.85 when she walked into the store. 